I think Noah's got a story that's very on brand for him. So about rats. Oh, is it? It's about rats. Oh, of course it's about We've done a couple episodes about rats, I swear. Yeah, we do we a lot of studies. Rat Utopia of... and then there was another one. Yeah, we do a lot of studies on rats. Yeah. Yeah, yeah very I true. I showed you that one on YouTube. Yeah, you did. No. <laughs> I've also, I've, I know this one. Well, so this is the bystander effect in rats. So the bystander effect is a social psychological theory where an individuals are less likely to offer help to a victim when there are other people present. So the more bystanders there are, like, the less likely it is that one of them will help. It's the same in, like, when you're in, like, a crowded situation and someone's fallen down, you should go up to a, an actual person and say, hey, call 911, instead of just saying help. Oh, 999, sorry. Actually, if you call 911, it still goes It still does. Yeah, I've, I've done that every it. time I've had to call. Yeah. I've done 911 because yeah. of America. Um, so that's why you should ask a specific person to help. Because people are less likely to help if there's other bystanders that aren't helping. So the rat study was um, <laughs> was released recently and pretty much there was an enclosure with a rat trapped in a restrainer inside of the enclosure, which I think is quite mean. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they really, really put, put it inside a plastic box. They put, rats, box. It, they put they? rats. They do put rats through it. Like they just trap them and stuff. They, they drug them. Like, oh, they'll take it. Whatever. Yeah. Like for all these studies, they really treat rats terribly. It's like it's like a it's a plastic see through box that is the size of the rat, and the the rats have the ability to like lift a latch on it and let the rat out. But they just leave them in there. So there was there's three different groups of uh, subjects added to the arena. So the control group was just a rat on its own with the rat and the restrainer. Uh, the second group was incompetent helpers. So an undrugged rat along with one to two other drugged rats. Um, obviously, drugged rats are so, rendered incompetent to help. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, like, the drugged rats can't do anything. They're drugged. So can, like, the, the drugged rats, they can still like move around. They and can stuff. They move normally, but they just, they're brain bruck. <laughs> they're, they're drunk. Brooke. They're brain broke. They're just kind of they're like stoner the rats, basically. Yeah, yeah. Rats. <laughs> like oh, bro, what's going on? Is he bro. trapped in there? Like, and... look at him. He's so... <laughs> <laughs> um, so they can still walk around, act normal. You know, they just can't help free the other rat because I guess their brain doesn't allow them to do that. And then um, the third group is potential helpers. So an undrugged rat, along with one to two. Oh, sorry, an undrugged rat, along with another one to two undrugged. You know, potential helper rats. All the undrugged rats can help. Um, that was the third group. Um, so <laughs> they found that the bystander effect is very similar in rats as it is to humans, where they're more likely to help when they're with other rats that help. So obviously, if you're surrounded by people and they're all like, oh, we should help that guy, obviously you're more likely to be like, oh, yeah, I'll help. Um, but an interesting thing is that um, <laughs> if there were incompetent rats with a familiar strain present, the rats were less likely to help than a rat on its own. So if you're around your family and your family's not helping, you're less likely to help. Uh, you kind of follow suit of what your family yeah, does. I mean, it's, yeah. it's really upsetting. It's like you can clearly see that rat wants to leave. They do rats do little noises that we can't hear, and they're like, "I'm struggling, I'm struggling." Oh, they do noises they that really? you can hear yeah. as well. They do noises that you I can't like hear. I like the squeaks. Yeah, because a, a majority of like their like their squeaks are like in a what's it called? It's a, a register. A frequency. register that we can't yeah, recognize. Yeah, yeah. So the same thing actually happens in. Sorry to. I'll, I'll, we can get back to that in a second. But yeah. The same thing actually cat, happens in cats. cats. So the reason yeah, that cats this. meow um, is because that's what they do to their mothers when they're kittens. Yeah, and they but. Know. Uh, but they like basically cats are constantly kittens for us because we always baby them. Yeah. And also mm. a lot of the vocalizations that they make are out with our range of hearing. So they they'll use the meows, which they know that we can hear to like to get our attention and to get to get stuff. It's basically like me. It's like me as an adult. If like if Noah always like got me everything whenever I went, ah! yeah. <laughs> that's the equivalent of what cats are doing. That's to how us. you get spoiled children. Yeah, and yeah. all cats are spoiled children. Yeah. They are. Yeah. But it's also quite cute. But I love them. Yeah. <laughs> like, so even, like, put, if you put your head in the rat cage and the rats come up to you, you can hear them sniffing, but you can also hear them making, like, little squeaks as well. Yeah. It's like, you can't hear it when you're far away, but if you go up close to them, it's kind of like... They've got, like, such a different... They've got so many different sort of sounds that they make. It's yeah. You but should like, come stick your head in the rat cage. I will. <laughs> but I'll go directly hair. after this podcast. Oh, my God, yes. <laughs> but also, the whole thing... The thing with rats as well is that, like, you don't might not know this about rats. They've genuinely got, like, personalities. Yeah. So with we've got three of them, and with, with some of them, you pick them up. You're not hurting them, but they, like, pretend like you're hurting them yeah. by squeaking. They squeak really Like, they're like, no, I don't. I'm hurt. I'm hurt. And I'm like, you're not hurt. He's like, no, but I, I'm definitely, you're hurting me. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not grasping you at it's all. It's like, literally just like, oh, they're so dramatic. They are. They do wrong. They do things, they like, they're naughty as well sometimes. Mm -hmm. So like, you've got like one of them. I had them in my room the other day. Um, like I built a little rat hotel. Mm -hmm. They weren't allowed on the bed because like, there's nothing for them on the bed. Yeah. But one of them managed to climb up on this like two foot tall bed. <laughs> and did it multiple times. So every single single time I saw him or heard him like like just jumping his way up. Yeah. I'd have to pick him up and put him down. And then he would go up and do it again. And I went, mean, no, 
I'd go up and do it again. I'm like, I, there's nothing here for you. Like, there's no food. <laughs> Everything is on the floor. Maybe this time that's yeah. exactly. something for me. Anyway, but, uh, yeah, back to the where, story. Where, back where to the story. Was I? Um, where was I? Oh yeah, incompetent rats and familiar strain present. The rats were less likely to help than a rat on its own. Um, so if rats see familiar rats not helping, they're less likely to decide to help, which again sucks. Well, I think I think what that kind of points to is that rat like the bystander effect is affected by who the group is. Yeah. yeah. So if, let's say it's in school and all the school kids know each other. If no one does anything, no one's going to do anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If no one takes charge. Whereas if it's like maybe strangers on the street, you're more likely to have one person step in and help. Yeah. Sort of thing. Yeah. But yeah. Interesting. It's definitely something you should be aware of. Like if you're ever in trouble, you need to, you like the whole, the thing is never, never ask for help. Never say, help me. Point to someone and say, do this. Oh, do this. God, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I did that when I got hate crimed. Mm. I literally, I was like running up and down the tube, up and down the tube. And then I saw like this massive family of people and I sat next to them and I was like, hey, look, <laughs> this guy's trying to beat me up. And they're like, oh, okay, sorry, sorry. And they were like, they put me in like a Let's little corner. Yeah. yeah, they really, it was great. But I was just thinking they wouldn't have done anything unless I talked to unless them. You talk, no, yeah, like, they, they would have yeah. just seen me like walking more, up and down It's kind of just tube. more convenient. Like, yeah, exactly. It. But also it's kind of this thing of like, oh, should I, should I do anything? Well, yeah. Oh, no one else is doing anything. So I probably, I, I shouldn't. And I don't yeah. like, you are you're, you don't feel any pressure to do it because mm. you're just as good as everyone else by not doing it. Kind of rationalize it. And you're like, oh, I trust everyone else's judgment. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not going to be the one. Rats were also more likely to help if they had previously previously seen other rats helping and were then tested alone. So if, you know, followed by example, you see another rat helping out, you're like, oh, that's what you do in this situation, which is interesting. Rats are like humans. We're all the same. What's interesting to me about that is that, it, like, okay, like obviously this is putting up personality on rats, but you, you shouldn't you shouldn't put personality on these kind of experiments um, because there's there's other things going on. Yeah. But what's, what's interesting, I think, if you could ex- extrapolate that out to humans, is that it feels very much like, oh, I've seen someone else do, I've seen someone else do that. Now I need to, now I'm comparing myself to them yeah. rather than comparing myself to everyone else. It's like sort of to the people that are around me. Yeah. So you've like, it's the standards that are set. It like shows a level of meet. intelligence. It's like mm. they remember from past experiences mm-hmm. that that was something good and that helped the rat out. Well, the fact that you can, the fact that you can have that rats will help other rats out of um, sticky situations like that is just, is another, is like, is this other kind of social intelligence that yeah. they've got where they're like some animals, like if they see another animal and like another animal of their same species, species in distress, they'll be like, I don't care. Yeah. It's not my. It's not my problem, bro. Whatever. Whereas rats are like, oh my god, this stranger who is also a rat is trapped. Yeah, I will help him. I, will I was going to say because I saw I saw Comrade another rat. study with this uh, similar kind of thing, and even rats that didn't know each other were likely to help each other. Mm. Like even like different colored rats, they did it with different colored rats. They did it with like family, and they were still likely to help them. Maybe not as much. No racism. As if they were related. That there, there was like no, a bit. A little bit. Racism. There was like a bit of it's more xenophobia though. than racism. Yeah. Isn't yeah. It? Like, yeah. But it's just interesting that like. I just I was watching it. I was like, it's just nice that they're just helping each other. Like they they know this rat is struggling. They're like, I'm gonna help you, bro. Oh my god, it's like I rat. actually I actually I've seen that in our rats where um yeah. So if you're trying to st- so the only time you can stroke a rat is when you've got a tired rat. Yeah. If they're if they're one of ours because they just they they don't want to be pet unless they're they can't move. Yeah. But if you if you reach in or try and pick one of them up or like if you've got to check one of them to make sure they've got no cuts or whatever, the like and they start sort of squeaking. The other the other ones are looking and being like, what's going on? Yeah. Do I need to help him? They're always watching out. They're like, they're like, I need to help. <laughs> uh, like, and if like, like, there's been sometimes where I've tried to reach into the cage and grab them, and yeah. one of them will come up and stick his face on me. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? Are you t- he doesn't want to be taken. Why are you trying to take him? Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Bro, and then I'll I just will, take them. And they'll, they'll be watching. I'll be like, okay. Oh, it's just I've funny. Got my eyes on you, bro. And then you put them back in, and they come and they sniff them. They treat him right. Okay, he's fine. It's like it's funny fine, when you I pick guess. them up and they know what's going on. Like yeah. you can pick them up and they're like, "Oh, I'm going on his shoulder. That's fine." You pick them up, you bring them to a different room. They're like, "Where are we going? Where are we going? What's happening? What is this? What's happening? It's really interesting. Like you can see their thought process. Well, it's when they t- when I take them to my room. When you take them out of your room, they're like, "What's happening?" And yeah. then I put them down in my room, and they're like, "Okay, oh. okay, this is fine." But I don't like going in between. Yeah, yeah, they really don't. <laughs> like when I try to take them back into the, the other unknown room. of traveling in but between the rooms. It's like the hallway. I try and take them back into back into like towards the cage into your room, and I'm like, oh, well, they don't like be. They don't even like leaving my room at that point. But it's like I would have thought that like they're like the cage is a safe place. Yeah. I'm going to the cage. They know they're going to the cage. They can yeah. smell it, but they still struggle. It's mm. like, look, I'm try- I'm trying to help <laughs> you, you, bro. Like, like how many times have you been put back in this cage by these hands, yeah. bro? Come on, we, like figure we, it out. We put them back in the cage, give them treats, being like, hey, this is a safe place. Yeah. So you enjoy this, and you get a treat as a reward. And, and they're they still just, just take like, the treat, and they're like, nah, I'm gone. Bro. Yeah, <laughs> I'm literally. gone, man. <laughs> uh, so that was a really good. That was a really good story. I it was really a good one. That story. <laughs> yeah, I trust you to bring a rat one. <laughs> If you enjoyed that clip, head over to patreon.com forward slash SciGuys where you can find the full show. Or you can stay here and catch up on old SciGuys episodes. 
or you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at SciGuysPod to find out when we're doing more live shows.